In 1996, a man living in the small city of Novochebokhsarsk in Russia received a very special gift from his friend Vladimir Nikolaev. It was a package containing some cuts of saiga meat. The saiga is an antelope common in the steppes of Russia, Kazakhstan and Mongolia, a real delicacy according to Vladimir. Grateful for the gift he had received, the man took the package home and left it with his wife to use in preparing dinner. The woman took the piece of meat, ground it up and made meatballs. That evening, husband and wife, together with their children, gathered for dinner looking forward to taste that so unusual meat. The woman placed a pot of meatballs on the table, everyone helped themselves and began eating. However, after a few bites, they started to perceive a very peculiar aftertaste, different from the typical taste of game meat. A flavor so strange and unpleasant that they feared it might have gone bad. So, after finishing dinner, just to be on the safe side, they decided to bring some of the leftover meat to a doctor they knew, to have it examined and verify that they hadn't eaten anything spoiled. The results of the analysis carried out by the doctor and the discoveries that followed would have made skins crawl and stomachs turn throughout Novochebokhsarks and the all of Russia. My name is Matt and today I'll tell you the horrifying case of Vladimir Nikolaev. I warn you that some details of the case are quite disturbing. Vladimir Nikolaev was born on March 16, 1959 in Novochebokhsarks, in the former Soviet Union. Having a troubled character since he was a little boy, he was used to committing petty crime and getting into trouble. Those who knew him at the time describe him as a generally antisocial individual prone to episodes of violence and alcohol abuse. So, no one was surprised when, once he became an adult, he began to have his first problems with the law. In fact, he was arrested for the first time in 1980 following a series of theft and robberies and sent to prison, where he will spend the majority of the next 16 years staying free for a few months at a time before committing more crimes and being arrested again. Despite the constant back and forth from prison, Vladimir managed to find the woman who loved him and wanted to marry him, and in 1992 he became a father. However, as usual, being unable to earn an honest living, he was soon arrested again and taken back to jail. When he was released in 1996, Vladimir returned to his apartment, only to discover that his wife had finally had enough of him and his unreliability, and had left him moving to another city and taking their son with her. Left alone, the man resumed his usual lifestyle, living day to day and committing petty crimes. One evening, as he was returning drunk from a party, he ran into a guy he knew, drunk as well. The man nodded to him and asked if he had a lighter. Vladimir stopped to talk, but in a short time the conversation turned into an argument, probably due to the altered state in which the two men were in due to alcohol. After exchanging words, they got to throwing hands. His opponent hit him and Vladimir responded with a punch so strong that the other man fell to the ground unconscious. At that point, Vladimir decided that he should help the man regain consciousness, so, since they were near his house, he loaded the man on his shoulders and went up to his apartment. Once inside, he laid the man in the shower and tried to bring him back by splashing cold water on his face. Not seeing any results, he changed his method and proceeded to slap him violently. When even this approach failed, he put his ear to the man's chest and realized, to his great surprise, that there was no heartbeat, the blow had killed him. Realizing the situation he was in, he decided his best option at the moment was to make the body disappear, so he dragged it to the bathtub and began dismembering it piece by piece, so he could dispose of it more easily. As he was busy working, an idea spontaneously came to him, out of curiosity more than anything. Why not taste it? I wonder what human flesh tastes like. He cut off a piece of thigh and boiled it. When he thought it was cooked, he removed the meat from the pot and took a bite, only to discover, to his disappointment, that it didn't taste good. Not wanting to give up, he took another piece, chopped it up and fried it in a pan. This time he found it had a pleasant taste, so he decided to keep the rest of the body to consume it gradually, either by frying or roasting the meat. As if that wasn't enough, he also had the macabre idea of making others unknowingly taste human flesh. So he gave some to a friend, telling him it was saiga meat, and sold the rest at an open market, passing it off as saiga or kangaroo meat. He then used the proceeds from the sale to buy alcohol.
After a few days, having now consumed or given away most of the meat, he decided to go and get some more to replenish his stocks, obviously in the form of another dead person. Therefore, one evening, he went out looking for potential victims, aiming for someone who had no strong family ties and whom Vladimir could make disappear without leaving a trace. He ended up finding the ideal target in another drunk he knew. After killing him, he transported the corpse back to his house, placed it in the bathtub and began to butcher it. First, he cut off the head and extracted the brain, which he would then keep on his balcony. Then he extracted some organs including the heart and liver, finally removed the muscles from the arms, legs and buttocks. Once he was finished, he realized he had obtained such a large quantity of meat that he didn't know what to do with it. So, as he had already done before, he decided to get rid of the excess by selling some at the market and distributing the rest to friends and acquaintances who, not knowing the truth, ate it believing it to be some rare and exotic meat. Nobody suspected anything until the doctor to whom Vladimir's friend had brought some meat to be analyzed discovered with horror that it contained traces of human blood. Shocked by the revelation and realizing with disgust that he had unintentionally consumed human flesh, the friend immediately contacted authorities. When the police went to Vladimir's house to ask him for an explanation, they found several human remains in his apartment as well as clearly visible blood stains in the bathtub. Faced with the evidence, the man didn't resist, admitted what he had done and was arrested. Once the investigation was completed, the police decided that the meat seized in the killer's home be returned to the families of the victims so that they could celebrate their respective funerals. When Vladimir was told about it, he asked if it was possible to hand over the meat to him instead so that he could finish eating it. He justified this insane request by saying that burying food would have been a waste. In 1997, Vladimir Nikolaev was found guilty of double murder and cannibalism as well as of the assault and attempted murder of two other people, whom the man probably intended to kill and eat like he did to the other victims. Although at the time there was already a discussion going on in Russia about abolishing the capital punishment, and the Supreme Court recommended that judges avoid issuing such a sentence, the crimes committed by the man were deemed too barbaric not to be punished with the death penalty. However, after two years on death row, Vladimir Senes was commuted to life imprisonment when the death penalty was finally abolished in Russia in 1999. The man welcomed the new Senes with joy, thinking he had gone off lightly. In a television interview, he optimistically said, it's no big deal, I'll serve 25 years and then I'll be paroled and released. However, his optimism didn't last very long, as to serve his Senes, he was locked up in one of the strictest maximum security prisons in the country from which in 2006 he gave an interview in which he said that those who are sentenced to life imprisonment should be allowed to choose between death and the death penalty. As of today, 24 years later, he is still behind bars and there is no indication that he will be released anytime soon. <laughs>